I would rather my six-year-old grandson start smoking cigarettes tomorrow than get a view of this stuff one time at the public library or anywhere else. Wow, that's how offended some of Idaho's lawmakers were to an informational folder Representative Guyanne DeMor DeMordant handed out to illustrate House Bill 666. Representative Bruce Scott would rather his kindergarten grandson start on a lifetime quest for lung cancer than for him to spend one moment looking at the book excerpts and pictures in that packet. Being offended is the basis for House Bill 666, the one that would remove the exemption for public and school libraries, universities and museums from being prosecuted for disseminating material harmful to minors. DeMordant said for years as a parent, she's been concerned about obscene and pornographic materials that have found their way into our school and public libraries. Well, I believe that this is happening um, inadvertently. The increasing frequency of exposure of our children to obscene and pornographic material in places that I, as a parent, um, consider safe um, and assume are free from these kinds of harmful materials is alarming. She added, she should expect a level of vigilance in protecting our children from such things. And those vigilantes should be librarians. She even said libraries don't have to follow federal obscenity laws established in 1973 with the Miller v. California Supreme Court case. It deemed the distribution of obscene materials not covered by the First Amendment, and it created the Miller Test, a three-pronged guide for determining what is obscene. One, it takes into account community standards. Two, a patently offensive description of sexual conduct. And three, whether it lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. All of those criteria could be considered subjective, obviously. However, libraries do consider the Miller test when deciding what books and materials to put on their shelves. Libraries have boards made up of community members. For example, the Ada County Community Library has a five member board who set policies that guide everything from behavior in the library to the selection of those materials. The criteria for selection include demand, literary quality, if it fits a need, those kind of things. And the staff applies that criteria to nearly every one of their nearly 200,000 items. But again, there's a bit of a wiggle room there when it comes to criteria, like what is objectively obscene? That part of HB 666, of course, came into question during yesterday's debate. I'm curious, because as I look at this, you know, one of the books that came to mind was a, a youth classic, I think it's Judy Bloom's Forever, which I think is actually how I learned what I knew at the age about male sexuality, and it depicts um, a teenage boy who has erections and masturbates and wet dreams, and it's kind of intended actually for a younger audience to introduce these concepts. Um, I am curious whether that would run afoul because it seems to fall explicitly under some of these categories in terms of overtly describing sexual excitement, masturbation, et cetera. Mr. Speaker. Is that your understanding? Speaker. Speaker. Could you put the house at ease? Yep. Immediately, Representative Brent Crane asked for a recess to lay the ground rules on what language can be used when discussing this bill. And to Rebel's point, who was citing Idaho code, by the way, when she was gaveled, if that language is deemed too offensive, how can a librarian be expected to decide what is or isn't obscene? Where is that objective line? Now, to clarify, Representative DeMordant made a point of pointing out the word knowingly in Idaho code, meaning in order to be held accountable, a library has to knowingly give or make available said obscene material. Now, knowingly is a high bar. And what about this term disseminate? Even that is a questionable term, according to the director of the Ada County Community Library. One of the many questions we asked on how this bill would change local libraries. You know, it's funny, I was thinking of that myself. The idea of the, the term disseminate means spread widely. We don't disseminate anything, we make things available. And we make them available for personal choice and family choice. And so, yes, that itself is a little disconcerting that they're considering us disseminating. Yeah. So to say, though, that there are no obscene materials in a library, would that be an accurate statement? Well, we follow, I mean, we are totally aware of the Supreme Court and the Miller test, and so by that definition, we would avoid obscenity. But there are books that are questionable or gray area. Or that someone, you know, subjectively would find um, 
something that they're not interested in and they would not want anyone in their family to be reading. But again, it's a personal decision. Is this a problem? Are libraries loaning, checking out books or materials to minors that would be considered obscene or damaging? We certainly do not see it that way. We understand that there may be people in the community who find an individual item, again, objectionable for their own values and their family values, but we do not see that being a problem. And we have had people question, you know, come to us. We have a, in this selection policy, part of it is a reconsideration process. And we have a form. People can fill out the form and talk to us about an item in the collection. And we'll explain, you know, the, the reviews, the reason it was added to the collection. We will evaluate it again. And sometimes it's possible that an item in the children's collection gets moved to the teen or a teen to adult. Um, but in most cases, um, we have not found this to be a problem at all. I mean, the book Fifty Shades of Grey is an adult book, obviously. Mm -hmm. But if a kid picked that book up and walked up to the desk and said, I want to check this out, how would a librarian handle that? Right. So in the library, um, when you become a card holder, your library card provides you access to all the materials in the library. And so if uh, a minor would come out and check out a book that was shelved, intended for the adult collection, the staff may engage in, oh, you know, is there some other materials we can help you with? But we may not even because we can't really judge why that child might be checking that. They may be checking it out for their grandmother or mother or aunt, who knows? Um, and it's not really our place to make a decision about that. We do not act in loco parentis. We do not act as parents. We trust that the parents will talk to their child. They might, you know, if they see that their child checked something like that out and it was not given to an adult, they may hopefully use that as a teachable moment to talk to their child about what kinds of books they would prefer <laughs> that they actually check out. Librarians aren't parents but this law might make you act as one. Exactly, and, and it would be almost impossible for us to look at our collection of almost 200,000 items and determine what an individual might find objectionable because it is so different. My fear is that it would become a chilling effect that we would question every potential item that we would put on the shelf and that, that would be impossible. Mary said one of her biggest concerns would be a librarian or everyone in the library being charged and subject to a fine or even jail time. Would the librarian be on the hook or the entire library, which is covered by taxpayer funds, by the way? Representative DeMordant was tied up today at the State House, understandably, so we couldn't ask her those questions. By the way, those books, though, listed in Representative DeMordant's packet, other than the puberty book, they would all be considered and contained in the adult section in local libraries. We did make a couple of random searches to see if any of them were carried in school libraries, and we did find a few, but those were listed as adult or young adult interest level. The bottom line for librarians, what role and responsibility should parents play in deciding what is acceptable for their kids to check out of the library? They say if you have a concern with what is in your local library, get involved locally, but not with the state law.